Hello everyone, it's Joel Davis with United Medical Transportation Providers Group and you are the broker.com, helping you to build a highly effective and highly profitable broker business. I want to uh, share a couple of quick emails to underscore a couple of key points. Um, typically what my team does is, is they correspond with any of you and get emails. They'll, ones they think of interest or things I could use as topics of conversation for videos or key learning lessons for some of my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients, they'll drop them in a separate folder for me and I'll go through. Clearly, I don't read them all. There's no way. I mean, it's just not possible to go through everything anymore. Um, but a couple of them. Uh, so I, the first one I want to share with you is correspondence between um, Dawn. Um, many of you um, who correspond with my team, typically Dan does a lot of stuff during the day and Don and Charlie do a lot of stuff in the evenings. So this person um, recently signed up for one-on-one. -on -one. Um, just reading Don's notes here. So this person recently signed up for one-on-one. -on -one. I haven't started work with her as of yet. But she writes, um, Good day, Mr. Joel. I am contacting you to inform you that I received a call today from Mr. Alex blah, blah, blah. I can't pronounce his last name. I'd totally butcher it. Mr. Blank is the point of contact for Movid Care in my area. I know how you feel about Logistic Care, and you'd be right. Uh, Mr. Alex inquired about the readiness of my company and expressed wanting to work with me. Being that we are starting with a good foundation, I informed Mr. Alex that I was not ready at this current time. Mr. Alex asked that I contact him as soon as I am ready. Uh, it's exciting to know there is a need for us out there. Uh, oh, there's tr trust me, there's definitely a need for you out there. The question is, is someone like uh, Movid Care, Mr. Alex, whatever, are they willing to pay you? Um, so Don sent back a, a good, short but targeted email. Said, uh, good evening, that is good news because it puts you in the driver's seat, which it does. Uh, and when she's talking about Movid Care contacting our client provider. So again, uh, Don says, that is good news because it puts you in the driver's seat. You are going to enjoy working with Joel. When the time comes, you will want all correspondence with Movid Care to be by email. Absolutely, we've talked about this time and time again. Uh, they will push you for phone calls. Absolutely true. But you must correspond in writing. Absolutely bullseye, spot on dawn. Joel will definitely help you. You will see why in the games that they, Motive, Movid Care, play. Great, uh, great key points by Dawn. Our client provider, here's what's great. Logistic Care is reaching out to her, and like she acknowledges, that's great to know there's a need out there. There is a need out there. Now, if they're not willing to pay you adequately, then there's no need for you. Uh, the need may be there, but they're not willing to pay. It's not for you. That's not your mission. But what's good about this is they are contacting her, and they're telling her, hey, you contact as soon as you're ready to go. So that's great. But they don't know what they're in for because Logistic Care is probably thinking that, Again, I've said this a million and one times, and I'll always say it. Most of these Medicaid brokers, they want a man in business. They don't want a businessman. They want a woman in business. They don't want a businesswoman, i.e. they don't want someone who, with smart, sound uh, business acumen, smart, sound sense. They don't want that. They want someone they can just chew them up, spit them out, chew them up, spit them out. That is not going to be the case with this client provider. So, um, Dawn, spot on. Uh, stay, and I've, I've said this a million one times, I'll continue to say it, preach it, and yell it from the highest mountaintop. Stay off the phones with the brokers. The brokers want you on the phone. I'm telling you, it's part of their training. This is literally what they're trained. Not only have I experienced it a million one times, again, I have relationships with people who used to work for them, some of them at high levels, and they will tell you it's part of their culture and their training process of how they teach their people, their representatives, of how they relate to the client provider. They want you on the phone because if they've got, if they have you on the phone, 
They feel that they could do that good old boy, win you over, build that relationship, and there's no paper trail. So two things. You got to feed them on both points. Number one, understand, you're my pet alligator. You're not my pet dog. I'm not going to play fetch with you. I'm not going to run around with you. You're a pet alligator. So even though you could have a good relationship with some of these people, they're not your friend. You can be friendly, but they are not your friend. They care about their, their bottom line and their bonus, not yours. Um, you've got to correspond by email. So what's going to happen, and this client provider is going to see, because I have so, I have countless, countless threads. Uh, if I go to my archives, I have countless threads of correspondence with brokers. And uh, look, well, can I call you? Let me call you first thing tomorrow morning. No, nah, actually, I'm going to be busy. There's a whole strategy we deploy. But long story short, we kind of play hard to get. And uh, we do it very, very strategically. But eventually, we get them to start talking, and they will. Eventually, they're going to break. Now, this client provider, is if they want her, if they need her, which they I suspect they do because they're reaching out to her, and she hasn't even come close to launching yet, uh, she's going to be in the driver's seat. She, depending on how we do this and how things develop, we're going to try to, unless, the, unless they're willing to open up the coffers and give her a, a good margin, then we're going to operate out of network, which means you could use us when it's convenient for us, it's a necessity for you, but you're going to pay my rates. And again, I have some uh, client providers who literally have a credit card, a credit card on file from the broker. So they don't even wait. So all these hijinks and nonsense that these brokers play of, uh, I'll give you a classic example. So a lot of these, like uh, Movid Care, I still call them Logistic Care. Uh, they want you with your dispatch. They want you if you're not going to use their systems, you have to have uh, a software system that has 24/7 hour support. Now, why do they mandate that? Which is an absolute farce, because they don't. They don't. These brokers, they don't do round the clock trips. They're not doing three o'clock in the morning trips, emergency room discharges. They're not doing that. It's just one more obstacle they want to put before you, one more uh, requirement they want to put before you to further control you, manipulate you, and enslave you as a sharecropper. Um, but again, I know we've talked about some of these co uh, topics in other videos, so definitely check all those out. It's good stuff, but I'm just uh, excited about this stuff because um, she's going to be in the driver's seat. But again, we have some client providers who literally hold on file a credit card so when and they operate out of network and now you now not everybody can do this because depending on where you are uh if you're in an area where it is just saturated with independent operators and they're just chewing them up spitting them out chewing them up spitting them out then you're never going to be in a situation where you can operate out of network like that but um good stuff man good stuff so the, this other situation now, the, here's another thing. Now this is correspondence between one of my client providers who uh, I'm not sure how long I've been with him, but I've been with him for a while. This dude is a hardworking, committed dude. I love this dude. Um, he keeps me on retainer. I work with him literally. He's, he's, one, of the, he's one of my clients that's like, I'll, I, I respond to him on, over the weekend because he's my man. He's a hardworking dude. Um, so the reason I'm sharing some quick correspondence for him is every single day without fail, we're going to get some white Walker questions of, um, Hey, how, how do I get contracts? Uh, yeah, I want some contract and service agreements. I can't seem to find any, any, uh, or I'm calling these facilities or I'm asking for contracts. No one knows what I'm talking about. And I've addressed this in so many previous videos. There is no wishing well down in the local piazza where you just go and drop your bucket and just reel up contracts and service agreements. That is not how it works. I know on all your uh, your your online group chats of all your vast white walkers and. And everyone, hey, does anyone have a sample template? Hey, who's it? Hey, who are you using for insurance? 
Dude, you guys so far, so far miss it. Um, great quick story. I was this this past Thursday, uh, one of my client providers from the great state of Alabama, and Alabama is a great state, roll tide. Um, he flew to Connecticut to get a great deal, great deal on a used vehicle, great deal. So he drove back through and he took a route so we could connect for dinner. So we ended up meeting at a nice Italian restaurant down in uh, Scranton, PA, you know, where the sleepy, creepy dementia patient with the cackling sidekick Medusa, where he supposedly originates. Um, so he was telling me, so when we were, while we were talking, um, I said, how was it that you actually came across, uh, you know, finding me? Because he was telling me about something. He's been in business for a number of years and he was on one of these uh, group chats and he's like man just the stuff on there is crazy and he goes and someone was saying yeah Joel Davis has good stuff this is and that if you can get past his politics or his rambling or whatever it was something along those lines and he's like man people talk about this guy so let me look into this let me look into it and then he obviously connected with me that way but he was talking about how these group chats are just inundated with free advice, which what do I tell you all about that free, free advice, all that what I call brother-in-law advice. It is costly. It's crushing you people because so many people come to us after you make all these mistakes. As I digress. So getting back on point um, with, uh, with this client provider of mine. Again, so many people, well, anyone have any templates or where do I get contracts from? How do I get service agreements? You're not going to go down to the local wishing well down the center of the piazza. Now, this guy, this is a situation. He is in a great state. I'm not going to name it because I'm not going to blow up his spot. He is in a big city in a great state. This is another classic example where every once in a while, and it's very infrequent, I get surprised by something, but I'm absolutely shocked by his situation because he is in a big area dripping with opportunity in a great state. And I am absolutely floored because he has not once, not twice, but three times, three times in the last week that he and his director of operations have visited facilities. They've been following the market analysis that we prepared to a T. Now, again, the market analysis, that's not something for the White Walkers because the market analysis, I mean, it takes time to develop, which means it costs money. So it's of no utility, no value to the White Walkers. Just go to the group chats and ask questions. Um, so he and his director of operations uh, have been going through strategic strategically going through the market analysis and they've been that these aren't people who hide behind the desk he's a doer he's a worker he doesn't just call people on the phone hey um you want to get a contract with me well i really want to like you and i hope you like me so maybe we can get a contract going no he gets out he goes there he visits he shakes hands his director of operations i mean they are following the market analysis they're deploying great strategies um, but not once, not twice, but three times in the last week, facilities have told him, hey, we need you. We need help, which, which absolutely floors me of how quickly it's happening for him because he's in a big city, lots of resources, huge opportunity, great state. I'm just floored. But, and again, I would love to uh, say the, the name, but I won't because I'm not going to blow up his spot because he's on something good. So, um, so this is for the third one. He emails me, says, hi, Joel, hope all is well. I think we got something close coming again. Blank, who's his director of operations. And I'll tell you about that situation in a second. I can write doctor dissertation on this guy because we have some incredible stuff. Blank, his director of operations, just visited Blank facility a few minutes ago and went, met with Mr. Blank. He pulled her into his office, talked to her for a few minutes. He is asking for a contract uh, to be sent to him and Blank, this other lady, for review as soon as possible. He said they need help with transportation. Thank you, sir. Again, so many people contact, contact us every single day. So understand the scenario I'm sharing with you is not the norm. It's not the norm. 
Um, every day, people contact us. Well, I, how do I get contracts? How do I get service agreements? This dude, and I am floored by it because of the market he is in for three facilities. Now, they visited much more than that because, I mean, his market analysis had a ton of leads because it's a big, big, big uh, community, big area. Um, but three facilities, all within the same week, all said the same thing, and they're suggesting the contract. They're asking for it. They're suggesting it. That is not the norm. The way this thing is unveiling. So I sent him back an email. Again, this is the third time. So I sent him back an email um, with the, with the, uh, um, a service agreement to be forwarded to them. And I was joking with him, teasing him. I was, I was busting his balls about, you know, I, I don't understand how you're not, like, excited about this. I mean, because this thing is un, unfolding right before his eyes really fast. So uh, he responds he says, good afternoon, Joel. Thank you so much for putting the agreement together. Man, you don't even know. I am very much happy and excited just watching how things are moving and processing them. It's like magic. Following your footsteps here. I appreciate the pointers below because I gave him some, some things in his email. He said, I'm taking notes pending when I get uh, feedback from the facilities. His situation, I won't give you too much, but... Um, we actually hired someone a good number of weeks back. First of all, we have been, he's been interviewing people uh, time and time again, interviewing people, looking for the right fit. Um, some, how, how many times people would schedule an interview, they don't show up. or And it's been hard because so many people are sitting at home making their $800 a week. They'd rather just sit at home and get paid by the government versus go out and get a job. So he has literally experienced this firsthand. Um, and I kept telling him, hey, we, we got to wait. We're going to get the right person. God's going to open, open up that door at the right time. And um, we actually hired this one guy who lasted, I think it was two days, maybe it was three tops, and then he quit. Um, now, the interesting thing about him is everything on paper, everything on paper is exactly what you would want. The prior experience, the background, Everything he said, looks the part, speaks the part, everything, everything. This is exactly what you want on paper. This is a classic example of how you cannot judge a book by its cover. So this guy bails on him. Because again, we're, he's, he's, he needs help uh, building this business because this is a new venture. I've been with him for quite some time, but we were putting a lot of things in place. He has, this guy is sitting on an empire, very dynamic. Uh, business model of what we're doing because he's doing things outside NEMT as well. Uh, so we need to be very intentional, very strategic. So he hires this guy. He bails on him in three days. He's disappointed, of course, frustrated, needs the help. Um, later on, he ends up hiring this girl that, you know, things look good on paper, but she has nowhere near the credentials, the prior experience, it, on paper, there's no question. The guy who, who worked for two or three days for him before versus his new director of operation, no question. At the end of the day, everything favors, on paper, the guy. Guy bails on him two or three days. Some time goes by a couple weeks. Ends up hiring this girl. Safe bet. No harm, no foul, but again, her resume, her background, her prior experience, nothing doesn't even compare to the previous guy who totally bailed on him. This girl, this director of operation, straight up hustling. Straight up hustling. While people are sitting home waiting, collecting their $800 a week, this girl is out there hustling. Using the market analysis to a T. Executing strategies, We've gone, we've discussed in detail, boom, to a T. Here, this is a classic example. You cannot judge a book by its cover. Uh, everything that you need with your people in the NEMT uh, industry can be taught. Can be taught, number one. So I don't need all the experience. I have 20 years for this and 10 years of that. I used to be EMT or whatever. You don't need all that. What you need is someone who's reliable, responsible, compassionate towards the elderly, and is willing to work. 
And this girl, this director of operation, is obviously willing to work. She's taking initiative. She has no problem. This is a key point. She has no problem putting herself out there to meet with people, to, to introduce the business, to shake hands, to talk about the business, the opportunity, ask questions. What can we do? How can we help you? How can we uh, support you? Serve as a support service to your existing transportation uh, service. Um, and it is paying dividends. So, and that, that is a key point. What they are doing is they are getting out from behind the desk and they are out there engaging. I don't care what business you're doing, whether you're doing the NEMT, the broker business, if you're operating your own broker business, if you get your own home care agency, if you are not willing to put yourself out there, get out there in front of people, you are never going to be successful. This is probably the most important message I've said from the, my very first video a million years ago. If you think you're going to grow and scale sitting behind your desk, it's never going to happen. So for those of you on your group chats that, oh, Joel just wants to sell you things, he's trying to peddle typical online get rich quick stuff. This is not get rich quick. I've never promoted a get rich quick. It's never going to be get rich quick. If you think you're going to sit behind your desk uh, and go to your, your front mailbox and collect checks, it's never going to happen. You've got to be willing to put yourself out there. So it's exciting for this client provider. Um, again, I've been with them, man, I, I'm going to say at least six months, you know, maybe a little bit more. Um, and to see the growth trajectory. And now, now we're at a point in time, all the, again, some, much of the delay is labor. We couldn't find people because they want to sit at home and collect their $800. And he'll be the first one to tell you that. Then we get a guy on paper, looks the part, speaks the part, boom, total flop, bails on him in two or three days. Gets a girl that, okay, you know, everything's good, not great, but good, and boom, she's just hitting grand slams. Three contracts in a week. This guy is ecstatic, and this guy's sitting on an empire because again, he's doing. He has. He's. He already uh, is uh, going to be an active licensee. Already got the training material for the broker. Already doing his uh, uh, NEMT as well as some other things. I mean, this guy is going to be in a great position. So, anyways, like they say in all the online group chats, the group chats with all the White Walkers. Hey, Joel has good content. If you can get past all his rambling. Hey, man, I ramble. I'm, I'm sorry. It is what it is. Although I'm not sorry. Um, I can go on and on about the uh, things I get passionate about. Anyways, I hope you take away some of the uh, key points to this message. Uh, when it comes to the brokers, know who has the leverage. Look for points of leverage for sure. Stay off the phones. Have a paper trail, i.e. correspond through email. I'm looking forward to working with this client provider because I just love, I love that situation. Um, and then when it comes to the contracts and service agreements, this guy's story is unique. Don't think that everyone's going to fall over yourself. I just, for the life of me, here I am, how many years into this game, and I cannot believe in this big city, in this great state, that this many facilities are saying, hey, we need help. I, I got to assume a lot of it is because of a uh, post fallout from the post scandemic, the pandemic. So I got to believe that some of it has to do with that in some way. I'm not exactly sure, but I'll continue to learn. Anyways, I'm going to continue to learn and you need to continue to learn because when you do, I'll see you at the top.